Բարև ձեզ հարգելի բարեկամներս պյուրքի ձայնը հեռոստահանդեսը դարձյալ ձեզ հետ է։ Որերս միացյալ ազգերի կազմակերպությունում տեղե է ունեցել, զինված հակամարդություններում խաղաղբնակչության պաշպանությունը կողմից գիրարվող կարոշջության մասին և անդրադարձել 25 տարի առաջ իպատասխան արցախի ժողովորդի խաղաղ ինքնորոշման իրավունքի սահմանադրական պահանջին ադրբեջանի սումգայիտ կաղաքում բնակվող անպաշտպան հայերի ճարդերին We also thank the Secretary General and High Commissioner for Human Rights and ICRC Director for International Law and Cooperation for their active involvement in addressing this important subject. This open debate offers an opportunity to reflect on our experiences in dealing with the issue of protection of civilians and to highlight priority aspects for united practical actions. Armenia strongly condemns deliberate attacks on and killings of civilians through the disproportionate use of force which is a gross violation of international humanitarian law in any conflict, in any part of the world. Mr. President, we remain alarmed by the worsening of the humanitarian situation in Syria and condemn all attacks and terrorist acts that indiscriminately target civilians, including minority groups, and are also deeply concerned with the fate of Armenians living there. Today they are struggling for life together with many Syrian citizens. We continue to receive refugees from Syria that are full of worries about escalation of violence in this country. We are convinced that in order to address this kind of situation, we must abandon selective approach to the violation of international humanitarian law. There must also be a strict adherence to human rights standards. Mr. President, the peaceful resolution of any conflict is not an easy enterprise and requires strong political will and painful compromises from both sides. We believe that the time has come to replace the unchanged rhetoric of propaganda and hollow allegations with constructive steps aimed at making the environment more conducive for a peaceful settlement. The statement of Azerbaijani Foreign Minister this morning with long-established distortion of facts came as no surprise to us. The references were made to 1992 military event where, according to the then Azerbaijani president, Mutalibov, the responsibility for the slaughter of the civilians of the city of Khojalu near the capital Stepanakert of Nagorno-Karabakh fully falls on the Azeri opposition group. It is completely the responsibility of Azerbaijan to thoroughly prosecute persons responsible for a killing of Azerbaijanis in Khojalu as well as for atrocities and violence against Armenians in Azerbaijani cities and towns. Exactly 25 years ago, as a response to the peaceful and constitutional demand of the Nagorno-Karabakh people to exercise its right to self-determination, the Azerbaijani authorities organized an armed mob which launched programs against defenseless Armenians living in the city of Sumgait. A savage assault was launched upon minority Armenian community living quietly at home, attacked for no reason other than their ethnic origin. Massacres in Ganja, Baku, Kirovabad, and other cities between 1988 and 1991 were far more barbaric and massive, leading to the deportation of ethnic cleansing of over half a million Armenians. These atrocities were followed by unprecedented Azerbaijani military offensive and operations against civilian population designed to implement a military solution to the question of Nagorno-Karabakh. Once again, it was Azerbaijan which started an armed aggression against Nagorno-Karabakh. As a result of that aggression, in early 90s, Armenia's entire border was transferred into battlefield. Innocent civilians were subject to the barrage of heavy artillery, missile shelling, and bombing. Today, 20 years later, Azerbaijani snipers continue in discriminate attack and firing at homes, schools and kindergartens, hospital and even ambulances in the inhabited areas of Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. Mr. President, in his recent report, the Secretary General refers to the attack against civilian facilities and objects which account 
according to the ICRC study, is the most complex and least recognized humanitarian issue. We join the calls made by Secretary General that the Council must assume a more proactive approach to preventing and responding to such incidents. We also call upon Azerbaijan for the immediate cessation of subversive activities and attacks against civilians, healthcare facilities, vehicles, and other type of providers, including threats against civilian aircrafts. In that context, let me remind the Council that on different occasions, the OSCE Minsk Group co-chairs called for the parties of Nagorno-Karabakh conflict to realize confidence-building measures, particularly those which would remove the threat to the civilian population. To this end, a proposal by co-chairs to refrain from pro provocative actions, remove the snipers from the line of contact, and establish a mechanism for investigating ceasefire violations could save lives of many civilians and military personnel on both sides. Mr. President, in concluding, let me mention that Armenia remains committed to the peaceful resolution process, strongly believes that the fundamental solution of the problem must be achieved only by peaceful means based on the principles of international law.